folks, we're on site. I'm coating over an existing vanity with a sink in place. You're not gonna wanna miss this video. Every step is included. Learn right now how to fix old worn out laminate countertops with Stone Coat Epoxy. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. What do you think? Oh my, this is a, <laughs> that's insane. Way cooler, right? It doesn't look like the same counter. No. We were going over existing laminate and a crucial step that cannot be missed is bonding primer. This vanity is probably 20 years old or more. So that's some old particle board. Adding a coating of epoxy under there like we did in the kitchen will really extend the life of that. I'm gonna do a real simple epoxy technique and teach you step by step. Come along with me, let's do this. The first step when working on site is prep. We're gonna cover the cabinet, we're gonna cover the floor, we're gonna cover the walls. We're gonna do the spray on stone method, so I don't want any overspray hitting these finished walls, finished cabinet, or finished floor. Delicate tapes down. Now we're gonna do delicate tape here on the wall just so we don't peel any of this blue paint. I'm giving myself about a sixteenth of paint there. This plastic's already been cut to three feet, which is perfect for doing your cabinets. It comes in three or four mil thickness. We picked this up at that giant orange big box store. Tight. Boom. Okay, we are ready to clean this and then prep the sink. Time to clean with TSP. I've diluted the TSP trisodium phosphate into a sprayer according to the manufacturer's instructions. This gets rid of the grease and grime really easily. I'm gonna wet this down, scrub it, and then rinse it off with some 91% isopropyl alcohol. Then we're ready to sand. You don't wanna sand that grease and grime into your laminate surface, that could bite you in the rear later on and repel epoxy. Give it a little shake and a mist. Get that sink rim really well. We're leaving the sink in place for this project, which is a huge plus with working with Stone Coat Epoxy. I'm gonna clean that lip really good because I'm gonna tape it off. We're leaving this sink in place. We're gonna rinse it off with some 91% isopropyl alcohol. Okay. All right, I'm gonna tape off this top mount sink. I'm gonna tape this lip with just regular old masking tape. I'll hold it off the countertop about an eighth of an inch, which will give me room for the epoxy to build up without enveloping this tape. But after I pour my clear coat of epoxy, we're gonna peel this tape 
to make sure nothing gets glued into that clear epoxy. Real, I'm really ironing it on here to that lip. It's looking good, it's sticking really well. It's in really important you clean that lip really well or your tape will not want to stick to it. All right, I'm gonna get some plastic and cover up that sink so we don't get any drips or spray in there. So I just attached my plastic to that tape that was sticking up on that lip. I'll come back and trim my plastic and this sink is ready to go. Prepping this sink versus taking it out, you're saving a half a day of work. Maybe not a half of a day, but a lot of work. We'll be able to leave this masking on the sink until we pour our clear epoxy. After we pour the clear epoxy, we're gonna peel this tape. We're gonna make sure there's no air bubbles and then this project will be done. All right, the next step when going over an existing laminate countertop, we've cleaned, we've degreased, We've prepped the surface. It's now time to rough it up with 60 grit sandpaper. And I'm also gonna round over any sharp points. Like right here on this edge, it's really sharp. All we need to do is add a little bit of radius to this. That'll get that epoxy to flow nice and even. We already have a radius here, so we don't have to worry about that front edge. I'm gonna go on about medium speed, sand the surface, sand the backsplash, and round over any sharp 90s. some areas by hand that I couldn't reach. Like I couldn't hit this far corner, so. Just break that edge. That makes that epoxy flow really good. That's all I needed there. Bingo. Get rid of all that sanding dust, again, with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. We like using 91% isopropyl alcohol because it will leave no water residue behind. Just getting rid of any of my sanding dust and it's time for the bonding primer. We've promoted a mechanical bond by roughing up this slick surface, but we're gonna add another layer of bond with a chemical bond by applying this smooth surface bonding primer. A thin layer is all that's needed. We're gonna apply it to the backsplash edges and surface, let that dry completely and then it's time for some undercoat. Give your bonding primer a good mix before applying. Only a thin coat of this is necessary. Don't forget that backsplash, very important. You don't need to change the surface to white. This thin coat is perfect. Hit your edges, backsplash, and surface. All right, the bonding primer is complete, guys. We're gonna let this dry an hour or so. Come back and apply the epoxy undercoat. 
All right, guys, we're back. That bonding primer is perfectly dry. It's now time to apply coat one of two of our undercoat. We have two colors of undercoat available at our website, stonecoatcountertops.com. We really like the undercoat because it dries really fast and you could get to pour an epoxy the same day. We're gonna do two thin coats, allowing the undercoat to dry in between coats. When the second coat is completely dry, that's when we're gonna come back and apply the stone spray. dry come back and apply coat number two we're gonna let this coat dry two to three hours all right guys my undercoat is nice and dry it's time to apply the stone spray. This stone spray is extremely hard to find at your local hardware store. Check out the link in the description below. That's gonna take you to the epoxy color center. We have a bunch of colors of the stone spray. This stuff is perfect for the first time DIYer working with epoxy. It also works perfectly when spraying on a vertical surface like existing backsplash like we have on this project. You wanna give it a good shake and then test the spray out. Here's a pro tip also when applying the stone spray. Don't just slam this nozzle open. That'll leave big streaks of stone spray across your countertop. Feather it, give it short bursts. But step one, you're gonna wanna make sure that this is spraying right. Perfect, that looks great. I got some plastic up here. Everything's looking good. Now it's time to apply to your countertop. You're gonna hold it 12 to 24 inches away. You can vary on how close you go to your countertop, but that's gonna drastically change the pattern that comes out of your can. Just starting real light. And hit that backsplash first. You can always come back and add more. It's hard to take it away. The color we're going with today is Greystone. This edge. Cool. Now I'm just stepping back, looking at the project as a whole, looking for any areas that are less speckly than others, which is looking pretty good. All right, I think that's it. Applying the stone spray was as simple as that. That was mega easy. It took me like three minutes. We're gonna let this stone spray dry. It takes three to four hours. Then it's time to apply clear epoxy. That step's even easier than this one. We're gonna mix up stone coat countertop epoxy, trowel it out, chop it, torch it, walk away, let that cure, countertop complete. We're gonna be back in three or four hours. We'll see you then. All right, the floor is covered, the cabinets are covered, the walls are covered. We're ready to pour some epoxy. Another pro tip, you wanna give yourself a little pathway outside of the area you're working in, just in case you get any drips on your feet, you don't leave any marks on your customer's floor.
All right, we're back. The stone spray dried perfectly. I'm getting ready to pour some epoxy. But step one, when you return, I'm gonna check all my plastic and my masking to make sure that's still nice and tight to the cabinet before you mix epoxy. A big mistake would be letting epoxy get on those cabinets. So check your plastic. It's all looking good still. Day one was simple. We arrived, we covered the floor, we covered the cabinets, we covered the wall. We were going over existing laminate and a crucial step that cannot be missed is bonding primer. Clean and degrease, sand, bonding primer, undercoat, stone spray, now it's time for epoxy. The tools needed when applying a clear coat of epoxy, notch trowel, chop brush, mixing bucket, a heat source to remove that air, that's all you need. For an epoxy clear coat, you need three ounces of mixed epoxy per square foot of countertop. We're going with two feet, we'll say two feet by four feet, eight square feet, 24 ounces. Yes, man. All right, 24 ounces. I'm gonna mix up a hair more. Taking into account, we're gonna do this backsplash. That's only a square foot or two. So uh, 24, let's go 32 ounces, just to be on the safe side. Okay, 16 ounces. All right, we're gonna mix for two minutes with a paddle mixer on a drill. You can also mix by hand using a paint stick just to extend that mixing time. In the colder months, don't be alarmed if your smaller batches of epoxy turn white while mixing. All that is is air getting incorporated into that epoxy. Later on, we're gonna use a heat source, a propane torch or a heat gun to quickly remove any air we incorporate into the epoxy. It's a simple process. Midway through mixing, you wanna slow this down, rub the sides and the bottom to incorporate any undermixed epoxy. Okay, we're gonna take that mixed epoxy and pour a couple little puddles. Use that notch trowel to evenly spread the epoxy. Then we're gonna grab that chop brush. We'll remove any loose bristles. We'll pre-prime it by dipping it into the mixed epoxy. Chop the top, that's gonna eliminate the trowel marks. It's also gonna mix that epoxy one final time to ensure there's gonna be no sticky or soft spots. We're then gonna take that chop brush and apply the epoxy to your vertical surface, knowing it's gonna run off. So we're gonna do that multiple times. We're gonna go really thin on that backsplash. It may take two or three coats. Before we leave today, we'll do one final coat on that backsplash as this epoxy starts to thicken, which will leave you less runs on the vertical surface. Tomorrow when we come back, we'll sand that vertical surface flat, get, in, get rid of any ridges or high points, and then apply that ultimate top coat, or you wanna keep it high gloss, you could apply another clear coat of epoxy to build up that vertical surface. Here we go, folks. Take that mixed epoxy, pour a nice little puddle, grab your notch trowel, and with light pressure, trowel that out on the surface, staying away from those edges initially. There's no need to be in a rush when working with this epoxy. Just take your time. I'm using really light pressure on this as I trowel, just letting it glide across. 
because I don't want to scrape off any of that stone spray I applied yesterday. I'm keeping it away from the edges. That's going to be one of my final steps is I'll come back and rub these ridges to get that epoxy to flow nice and uniform. Right now, I'm focusing on the surface. I'm making sure to get a nice even coating all over the surface. I'll start walking it up that backsplash, but that's just the excess I'm taking up there because it's going to continue to self-level down. I'll come back with my brush and pick up, pick up this excess down here and brush all the backsplash. But first, I'm focusing on the surface. Add a little bit to the back here. Okay, I'm gonna switch to my chop brush now. So I'm gonna take my brush, I'll pre-wet that, get some epoxy on it, and then chop it into the areas that my trowel can't reach. Just paint that on, chop it on the top, and it's gonna run down. All right, load up your brush with some epoxy, and we're gonna apply it to this vertical surface. Just paint it on, chop it on the top. The epoxy will self-level and, and run down. And as we, as we continue to work, we'll just keep light pressure and rub those drips down. You can pick up epoxy down here as it builds up and keep applying it to the top. See those runs? That's what's gonna happen. Just take your brush and smooth them out, make them nice and even on that surface. Wow, that's looking good already. Before we leave today, we're gonna peel all this plastic so none of it gets stuck in the epoxy. You have multiple hours, guys, here. So don't be in a rush, don't panic on having to peel that plastic. You could peel the plastic three to four hours after you mix. Rub down any vertical runs. All right, the backsplash has a nice coat. I'm now gonna chop the rest of the surface and eliminate trowel lines and mix one more time here. Let's apply epoxy to these edges nice and evenly and just rub along those edges. Make any dry areas wet and that epoxy flow is really uniform over those edges. Now here on the front, you can use your gloved hand or brush. Top has been chopped, it's been troweled. It's time to remove the air out of the epoxy we incorporated while mixing. Clean off your fingertips before grabbing your torch, that will extend the life of your torch. All right, we're gonna use a torch to remove air. You can also use a heat gun. It's the same process. Sweep the surface with an, an inch or two away. Keep that torch head or heat gun moving while doing it. Now I'm gonna to torch the top of the backsplash, not the vertical part. No need to torch the vertical. As you get rid of the air horizontal surface, bubble-free epoxy will self-level over, leaving that vertical surface bubble-free. Torch at least three times in the winter months. You may need to torch an additional time or two. Let the epoxy cool a few minutes, five to 10 minutes in between torching. This is a particle board vanity. And to extend the life of that, take your fingers with those epoxy drips and really coat that bottom edge. This vanity is probably 20 years old or more. So that's some old particle board. Adding a coating of epoxy under there 
like we did in the kitchen will really extend the life of that. All right, my epoxy's bubble free. I'm gonna let my bucket thicken up for about an hour, let that epoxy get a little more thicker, and come back and apply another coating to that backsplash. So we're gonna let this thing sit. This vanity looks so much better than what it did before. I can't wait for my customer, my little sister, to check it out. All right, I'm back. It's about an hour later. This epoxy is much thicker. I'm gonna put a little bit of epoxy on the tip of my brush, then brush this backsplash and apply one more vertical coat. See that, I kind of just take some off and then right onto the splash. Horizontal, starting at the top. Apply some, I flip my brush, come back and hit that bottom. Eliminate any runs. I'm applying barely any pressure to that brush. Just letting the tip of that brush glide right across the, that vertical surface. And hit the edges. Oh, is that Mel? Yeah. You wanna come see this? Yeah. All right, we're just about done. I haven't pulled the plastic yet, but what do you think? Oh my, this isn't, <laughs> that's insane. Way cooler, right? You get. It doesn't look like the same counter. No, no. That looks like Back it's splat. really hard. No, it wasn't. It was easy. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm going to get ready to pull this plastic and that same sink will be in there. You didn't even have to take the sink out. No, no. You didn't want to put forth the bucks to buy a new sink. So. You have to see the mess underneath. No, right. <laughs> exactly. This looks amazing. Right on. So it'll be wet for the rest of the day. You won't touch it. Keep the puppy and the kids out of here. But tomorrow I'll be back to get rid of all this plastic and you'll be ready to use your vanity. Yay. Cool. It's amazing. Right on. It's time to remove the plastic. We're going to start with the sink and the backsplash. We're going to leave the plastic on the cabinet because the epoxy is still going to drip. We'll be back tomorrow to remove that lower masking. So to do this on the sink, I like to just cut it, cut your, your plastic and tape down to one edge here. You want to get it all the way. There we go. And now as I peel, I'm going to peel up and away. First, let's get rid of this. And then we'll come back. So anywhere the plastic is touching the epoxy, you want to remove it before the epoxy dries. Guys, today's work is done. That clear coat's laying out perfectly. We're gonna let this cure overnight. Come back tomorrow and apply the ultimate top coat. We'll see you then. Oh, I can touch it? Yeah, you can touch it, it's dry. Ooh.
so smooth. What do you think? It's freaking gorgeous. Much prettier than oh before, my gosh, right? It's insane. Right, and we did this for under 100 bucks, including all the prep yeah. materials. You can go over your old surfaces. We didn't fill the dumpster up with your vanity. It's awesome. 50 bucks? And <laughs> a little over. We're gonna add the top coat right now, okay. so that adds a little bit of cost, Still. but it, it's the final step in our countertop system to make this thing last for decades. It's gonna be extremely durable and have a more natural sheen to it. It's gorgeous. So, cool with that? Yes. I love how we the sink almost became brand new, when, new. We, when we put that in, right? Mom saw the picture and she said, "Did you paint the sink too?" I'm like, "Nope. <laughs> it just looks that, better." Right. It's a good it looks good. So, all right, dude, I'm going to put on the top coat. We won't nice. be here very long. It's an easy step. All right. But that'll be ready for use tomorrow, so you'll need to stay out one more day. Okay. Cool with that? Awesome. Thanks, Mel. Catch you later. All right, we're back. It's past 24 hours. So I'm gonna need to lightly scuff up the epoxy before I do the ultimate top coat. If I were to come back and we were subtly tacky still, the epoxy was still slightly open, you could do the top coat without sanding, but we're all the way dried, we're cured up. I'm gonna lightly sand, mix up some top coat. For the edges and for this little top, I'm just gonna go with this maroon Scotch-Brite sanding pad. You don't need much of a sanding. It's just gonna create a mechanical bond for the top coat. And my vertical sides, the way I brush that, they're nice and smooth. There's no ridges here. So I don't need to get out. If I were to have a couple runs or ridges, I'd get out my random orbital, sand that down. It would take a little too much time sanding by hand. But these bad boys are nice and smooth. So I'm just gonna scuff them up. Sanding is complete. I'm gonna wipe and clean the dust with some 91% isopropyl alcohol. All right, 91% isopropyl, quick little misting, and wipe that dust off. Man, I can't believe how pretty that backsplash looks. Awesome. It's an okay time to get rid of your masking now because the ultimate top coat is not a messy process. I am though gonna tape a one row of tape up here just so I don't get any on that paint. No leaks. So using that delicate release tape, even if you your cabinets aren't in the best shape, you're not gonna pull any paint off. It's really, really good choice to use. Sweet. We're gonna get the lint out of these rollers. You also want to make sure that your rollers are rolling nice and uniform. Every so often your roller will have like a something wrong with it where it skips or hops on your surface. That can show up with the ultimate top coat. So if you have a roller that doesn't roll nice and uniform, it's okay to discard that. Save it for some undercoat. Don't use it on the top coat. Did you know that that's my sister's artwork? That's pretty cool. She took her art and made it into a shower curtain. If I came in here to shower in the night time, I would have to be sleeping on the side of my mom's bed, terrified, but that's pretty sweet. She's a really good artist. She's also a tattoo artist, look at that. It's just to keep any of the uh, top coat off the paint. Before mixing, give part A a really good shake. There's an ingredient that likes to settle to the bottom, so always give Part A a good shake before mixing. So I do not need very much top coat at all for this. So I'm gonna mix up the smallest amount on this two to one little chart they give me. I'm gonna pour Part A to this bottom one, and then Part B to the top one. The rest of the material up to that second one. And we're ready to mix. Little popsicle stick or mixing stick, gonna mix for two to three minutes. Then we're gonna add up to 10% by volume of water. You can see the material is somewhat like Elmer's glue. We want this a thick latex paint 
before we start to apply it to the surface. So be sure to thin the material to about a thick latex paint before pouring it into your paint tray. Okay, I'm gonna add a wee bit of water. Nice. Perfect. See, much thinner. That's what you're looking for. It's thick latex paint. We're gonna move my dry rollers aside. Pour the mixed top coat into a paint tray. Now, the ultimate top coat, we do a wet roll and a dry roll. I'm gonna completely saturate my wet roller that I've delinted, get it soaked in the material, roll off the excess, and apply it to the surface. So the top coat goes on, milky, that's totally normal. As the material dries, it becomes crystal clear. Ooh, that's gonna be so pretty. my brush here to get this small area. Get these 90s with the brush. And now I'm gonna start to remove some material with my wet roller. Try to get the surface as uniform as possible. And then we're gonna come back with a completely dry, clean roller to remove the residual top coat. That way the top coat looks nice, tight finish, like you've sprayed it on. Get that brush. Pulling up some of that material out of there. Nice. We're switching to a dry roller. It's rolling really good. And with light pressure and pressure on the frame of your roller, roll the surface and edges to remove excess material. Ooh, that's gonna look good when this dries. I'm hitting that corner and rolling up. It's really easy. Because this vanity was so small, I didn't need to go to that second dry roller. This is a really, really pretty uniform finish. Wow. I can't wait to see this dried. The ultimate top coat is complete. We're gonna let this dry overnight. The vanity will be ready for use tomorrow morning in 24 hours. Working with epoxy on site over existing surfaces should not be intimidating. Just prep your project properly. That is the key to success. Cover that floor, cover the cabinets. The epoxy is the fun part. This project was really simple. It only took me a couple days and a couple hours each day to accomplish this vanity. A very important key to success is applying that bonding primer when going over smooth existing surfaces. Clean it really well, then bonding primer, then undercoat. Now you're ready for epoxy.
Guys, I hope you learned some skills, tips, and techniques that will give you the confidence to start your first or 100th epoxy project using Stone Coat Epoxy. We're gonna let this dry, we'll come back and show you how it looks tomorrow. Guys, come check out this natural finish on this vanity we poured with the sink in place. This thing looks sweet, check it out. Content. What's up folks, I'm back on site where I use the spray on stone method to completely revitalize this worn out laminate countertop, keeping the backsplash and sink in place. That was my favorite part of this project. But why am I down here talking to you like this? I'm here to show you durability. This was poured two weeks ago. My customer has a little jar of knickknacks they take out of their pockets before hopping in the shower. Let's see what we can do. I got keys, I got a bolt, I got an Allen wrench. Oh, I had an Allen wrench. I got an Allen wrench and I got a set of nail clippers. Let's do some scratch testing. That's my Allen wrench. Wow, let's get close up. Nail clippers. Sweet. Got the keys test. This top coat is indestructible. Here is an Allen set, Allen wrench. So that's rough. Guys, we're good to go. Check it out. Just regular day items that you'll find. Zero damage. And this stuff's only a couple weeks old. It's gonna continue to harden and provide protection. That bolt was what I was worried about the most because of those sharp threads. But we're good to go, folks. And that, folks, is why we love using the Ultimate Top Coat. Not only does it tone down the glossiness, it adds a layer of durability where you won't have to worry about scratches damaging your countertops ever again. My favorite part of this entire project, I didn't have to spend the time, labor, and mess in removing this backsplash. The stone spray that you can find at the Epoxy Color Center was the secret ingredient to make this project look really, really nice without removing that backsplash. Thanks again for watching everybody and from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this and we'll see you on the next video. Stone Coat Countertops, you got this.